Well, hello and welcome. My name's Penny. I live in the southeast of England with Pete, my husband, and four chickens because unfortunately, Daisy do. We had to have her put to sleep a few episodes ago. And I've been doing Penelope's Chinwag since July. So if you're new and you'd like to, there's a few episodes to catch up. And if you're not new, welcome again. It's nice to see you here. I've been practicing that. You know what? The hardest thing about doing a, a, a podcast or vlog or whatever they're called, I call it an episode now, um, is the introduction. Because have you been here before? Are you new? Do you, you know, are you just scrolling through? The things I talk about, if you're new, you won't have a clue about. But if you've been following me, um, you know what I'm talking about. So, do you know it's jolly hard? Well, I'm just going to say my name's Penny. I'm married to Pete. And do you know what? You know, I always say he wants to get in on the act. I've just been out there. It's early, actually, and he's in his dressing gown. He's not scurry funged yet. See, there again, for a new viewer, scurry funged is a, is a word that means to quickly tidy round and to quickly put things right before people visit. But my friends and I have come to use it for absolutely everything. Scurry funging the house, scurry funging yourself. Are you scurry funged? And Pete's not scurry funged. He's just having his tea. So I just said I'm going in the conservatory now to do, uh, you know, to do episode uh, a chin wag. So if you do come in, which I don't mind now, make sure you're dressed because you don't want it going out to the world when you're not. So he's just come in and said, have you started yet? Well, um, see this vest, he said to me, it's the cuff is too long. He's got a silk vest and the cuff's too long. It comes down to here. Do you think you could take it up? Is it possible? And I was just starting doing my chin whack. So, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Does he want to be sitting here doing it with me? No. But, yeah, he too. Anyway, enough said. Washing machine head. My, my head's washing machine this week. And those of you that know me again will know what washing machine head is. It means I've got so many thoughts and they're all going round. I expect you have them too, washing machine heads. And they've just got to be sorted out. Well, mine had to be sorted out this week. It's almost sorted out, but not quite. So that's where I am. So what am I going to be talking about this episode? Well, first of all, just to tell you that I took a tumble. I didn't have a fall. No, I was seeing Pete out uh, because we've got a very, you can't see. We've got a mirror, but you still can't see what's coming. And so we always see each other out just in case there's a silent cyclist, you know. And um, I was seeing him out, just turned round on a sixpence and standing like that and went down like that. And I tried to save myself with my hands, but what saved me was my mouth. And so my teeth, well, I could have been so much worse. It was on soft ground, if you like, because we've just got stones on earth. Uh, where the cars are parked. That is a story in itself because, yeah, I'll tell you that story one day about when Pete fell down a sinkhole out there. I oh, know, things happen on our drive. Um, remind me. But uh, anyway, I just went like that. And what saved me was my lips. So my teeth went through here, my teeth went through here. And I looked really nice for, oh, and it shook me up, I'll be honest, but he was marvellous. So, yeah, I had breakfast in bed and all of that. So it's taken a while for the shake to get out of my body. But next door neighbour is, um, she's got a lovely herbal apothecary next in the town. And, of course, on to her. Oh, Patina, you know, can you please um, give me some stuff? So... I got some stuff for nerves and shakes and this and that and I'm fully recovered now and the scab came off last night so I'm fine. You can just see a little bit. Yesterday I popped round to see mum and she told me about her wedding which was lovely 
and I was going to do DNA this week because, as you know, I've had my DNA results back. Pete got his back last night, and my washing machine head is going round and round, and I just can't get it together. So definitely DNA next week. Friend's written a poem about, so I've got a poem. I can tell you all about it, um, and for Pete now. So I'm going to start and start getting washing machine head, you know, in order so that I can speak coherently about uh, about my DNA. But any of you who know me know that um, I'm as much English as I am Scottish now, and I've always wanted to be Scottish. So my friend Heather's teaching me Doric. Yeah, Quine is a girl, and because uh, I speak, well, because I come from um, uh, Peter Head. Yeah, I would say in English, Peter Head. But, you know, it's Peter Head and um, uh, Aberdeen. And so they speak Doric up there. And, uh, yeah, Quine, a wee Quine, little girl. A loon is a boy or man. Ah. So Jiken, Jiken, uh, yeah, do you know? Fit fine. Yeah, all of these things I'm learning, but I'm going to tell you about that next week when I've practiced it a bit more and uh, I can I can go into my DNA. So because otherwise I'm going to go off on a tangent and I'm going to be here for at least two hours. So that's a definite. I'm going to start. I have started, but do you know what? Once you start on Ancestry and you go like that, it's hard to keep it contained. Anyway, I do... Mum does mention Aunt M in her little bit, and Aunt M lived in Cornwall, and I remember Aunt M dearly. I really do. And um, I remember staying in her little cottage in Mevergizzi. And when I say old-fashioned, I'm talking, you know, they, they had a baker's opposite, which had a big oven, and they used to take their food over there and ask them to cook it. I slept on a horsehair mattress, and I had a candle and a bowl, you know, with water in it. It was really, really old fashioned. I remember staying there as a girl and feeling so excited and it being another world. And I've looked up and seen her life. She lost her husband in 1922. There was a touching moment about her brother in, in 1916. Now, I was going to tell you all here, but I'm going to leave that all to next week. So we've set that up. So that'll be something to look forward to. So where am I going to start? What have we got this week? We've got a little film because I went out before I had my little trip. Uh, we went out for a lovely walk to Margate. And of course, we wanted to walk right to Margate. We got three quarters of the way there. But there's so many birds and I met so many people and chatting about the birds, which was lovely. So I put that film up and at the end of that film, oh yes, we went out for our anniversary meal. So I put a little bit up about that. And then I've got some beautiful flowers and these flowers weren't just ordinary flowers. They were very, very special because when we go to Tresco on the Isles of Scilly, we go to the Abbey Gardens. We visit there practically every day. It's a very special place and the plants are very special and the bunch of flowers that I got was all the flower, not all the flowers, but flowers from the Abbey Gardens. So I've put up some photographs of that bouquet. It was gorgeous. My daughter bought it for me and it was really special. The little orange flower that you'll see, when you touch it, you, you would think, and also the pink one, when you touch it, you think, oh, these aren't real, but they are. They, the orange one feels completely like plastic but it, it is real. So that's at the end as well. So that's my little film. A little bit about Mum's wedding day. That was prompted by her wedding dress. I'm going to do a fascinating fact about the owl's wing. Just a little bit about TA, because I want to sort of sum it up and start next week. Um, because I was talking to one person who's following it through, and she thought that was the end, parent, adult, child, no. I'll follow it through. And for as long as I do chin wag, which I don't know how long that's going to be, we're going to see how it goes, aren't we? But 
for as long as I do chin wag, I'll be showing you some TA. But this week I want to go into more about what it is and, and why, yeah, how it helps us. I want to tell you a little bit about Anne, who is mum's bridesmaid, age five, uh, about, she's written a book. Uh, so I said I'd just tell her a bit about that. I want to show you something I've made from the material that I showed you. And I'm getting along with my with Thomas quilt so I've started to sew the bits together and then during this week I'll take some more photographs and show you how I layer it up ready to quilt because hopefully uh, this week I'm going to start getting it ready to quilt. So I'm going to go straight on and tell you the fascinating fact about the owl's wings. Don't you love owls? I wouldn't know anybody who doesn't love an owl. So beautiful and so many different kinds of owls. The wings of an owl enable it to fly in virtual silence. The feathers on the leading edge are serrated. One theory suggests that this helps to break up the flow of air, reducing noise. Meanwhile, the trailing edge of the wing has a flexible fringe further dispersing airflow. Nearly all remaining sound is then absorbed by the velvet-like feathers on the owl's wings. Scientists from Cambridge University are developing a coating, mimicking this wing structure for use on wind turbines. Early tests show that the coating significantly increases blade speed and efficiency while drastically reducing noise. In the future, scientists hope similar coatings can be applied to a wide range of applications. The natural world helping us out again. So that's the owl's wings. Isn't it lovely to think that again, an owl is teaching um, scientists how to make those wind, times, wind turbines quieter. So they do make a row. Now I'm going to tell you about Anne's book. And here it is. She sent me one. Open-hearted. Marianne Keyes has uh, written a, what would you call it? Yeah. Lifted my spirits beyond description. So loving and non-judgmental. And Anne Ingalls' enjoyment of life is beautiful to behold. Genuinely inspirational. I love Anne Ingall. <laughs> That's lovely, isn't it? Fancy having that. It's beautiful, isn't it? So as you know, Anne lives in Dublin and um, yeah, I've got a photo of her here sitting in the bookshop, ostensibly reading a book and now she's up for a book award. So it's really exciting. Such an uplifting read. 80 years of love, loss, laughter and letting go, Anne Engel. Because of course, um, well... Anne's only 10 years older than me. And so really, you know, we were we were very close growing up. But then she moved to Ireland because she met the Irish Peter Ingle. And uh, unfortunately, he developed mental health issues, uh, which uh, led him to take his own life. But the whole book, as it says, is inspiring because Anne didn't let that beat her. And she had eight children. Well, she's still got eight children. And she managed to bring them all up really, really well. And they've all gone on to be successful and happy people. So there we are. I just wanted to mention it because there she is, age five. You'll see when mum uh, shows you her, well, I show you mum's wedding photo. So I'll move on to what I've been making this week. Last week I showed you my silver darlings hat, my herrings yeah, but I didn't show you inside and I think that's just as lovely to see. There it is. There's inside. And of course, when you carry the wall forward to do the different colours, that's what it looks like. So the hat is doubly warm because you've got all that as well. So I wanted to show you that. So that was from last week. The little silver darlings. And I watched... Uh, country file I think and they were talking about it was an old one and they were talking about the sea eagles and the otters on Mull that as you know captivated me 
and I realise now so privileged to see what I saw but didn't realise at the time being a, a non-birder and then becoming one and then um, also they took you up to the north of England and showed you all the photos of the boats and the women gutting the fish and the silver darling so it was quite nice I enjoyed that episode of Country File. Finished peach socks and they're plumptious. Oh, I can recommend that wall. Into the Storm, I think it was called. And, um, oh, they're so, I'm going to have to get do myself some. Because my feet were chilly last night sitting in the lounge. We've got wooden floors, you know, which I love because it means no hoovering. But, uh, yeah, so... He's really anxious to wear those. Stuart yarn. I showed you last week. But I'm I'm pleased to have those done for him. Right. And then do you remember I sent off for some uh, material? And I made a bag. Oh, I put some little bits in here. I'll just take them out. Because this little bag is uh, for a friend of mine and I realised she didn't get one when I made my you know my bags after my dad had died don't ask me why because she's been a dear friend in fact you know I showed if you've watched my previous episodes I showed you a picture of her and me at my daughter's wedding and also her husband wrote the little um, poem for Chinwag about the fig tree so, yeah, darling Jan, we call her. And I've made this for her. I've made this for you, Jan. Here it is. I'm hoping she'll like it. I put in a pocket. And the base. Handles. And I made her a tissue case to go with matching and you can put you know credit card or or whatever you want I put a little bottle of um you know hand gel now so that's going in the pocket and then she loves embroidery and she's recently done an embroidery but she said I felt I used the wrong silks so I've just put a couple in for her um this is a Lorna Bateman. Oh, it's beautiful. I'll show you her book one day. I'm going, I intend in doing an, it, it, something myself, which I'll show you. Not quite just yet ready to do it. She does beautiful silks. And um, so I've just got a couple here for Jan and I'm going to put them in the pocket. They're hand dyed by Chameleon Threads in South Africa. And this one is called Winter Dawn. But can you see all the different colours in there? Not quite so easy to see. It's a lot greyer in real life. Um, this one is called Woodland. And this one is called Anemone. So if Jan wanted to send off for some others, uh, I mean, they're £2.50 each. I mean, they're, they're absolute, I think they're such good value. So if you're thinking of doing some embroidery, they're beautiful to use because of the variegation. So that's going in the pocket and that's going to be sent off today. So that's what I made, the socks and the bag. So I'm making Tommy's quilt now and I'm thinking now, although I, would, I do want to put another pair of socks on the needles, but I'll just take my time to do those. And I'm thinking of doing a little bit of embroidery. And I'll show you that next week if I start it. I popped round to Mum's yesterday, so I'm going to put that up here. And then I'll come back and I'll do some TA. I'll see you in a minute. Well, here we are. We're going to talk about your wedding dress today, Mum, your wedding. Yes. How do you feel about that? Oh, what a busy, busy time it was and all um, planned very, 
within a couple of months because it was during the war and yeah. everything was rationed and yeah. material was rationed. Everything? Yes, everything. How you got it together. Yes. And I, I was looking at, um, uh, you know, what you call it? Um, oh, what's in London? A museum, you yes. know, the museum. Yes. Yes. And they had, a, they had an exhibition of people that got married in the war. And there was one lady there and she got married in what they called a costume. Yes. Yeah, a dress. And yes, a, a skirt and a, yeah. and a jacket. Yeah. Which was... Usually in a in a tailored, you know. That's were, it. Yes. She had a tailored dress on with this tailored jacket. Yes. Not like this blouse that keeps rocking up. But anyway, uh, and she said that her husband was disappointed because he didn't see her in a wedding no, dress. Yes. So I think there must have been lots of different yes. emotions around yes. at that time. Yes. But um, mm? my wedding dress was borrowed. Borrowed. Yes. Yeah. My... The, the lady I worked for, she um, lent me her wedding dress and it fitted and she was so pleased that it was being used yeah. as well. Yeah, because um, so you said her husband was... Her husband was was a prisoner of war yeah. and she had a little girl of six and managed... They used to manage the shop together before he went to the war and then he was made a prisoner of war so she was on her own I was the only help she had in the shop and so she was so pleased to uh, yeah to lend me the dress and, and you said she was quite tiny because she couldn't yes, reach she was, the things on right. the shelves her husband used to do all the yeah and, and so she had to um get help when she could you know for different things yeah it just made such a difference to her life, not just the fact that she couldn't reach things and couldn't yeah. do things, but for him to be a prisoner of war as well. And, yeah. of course, she didn't see him until after the war. No. So, so she was very pleased that, that she was the dress was being used yeah. and that I was able to use it. Yeah. And also then, it was a bit of an... Un well, it wasn't an unusual time of the year then, was it? Because you had no. the days off work. Yes, we... we chose Christmas Eve because Christmas Eve was on a Sunday and all the shops were closed and everybody had the day off. Yeah. Most people had the day off. And you only got Christmas Day and Boxing Day as a holiday then. You were back at work on the following day. So we just had those three days off. So that was our wedding day. and Yeah. Christmas Day and Boxing Day was our honeymoon. And you said, Nanny... Um, Dad's mum uh, put on a lovely spread oh, for you. Oh, mum organised. Yeah. To think that that was all done. She had to arrange for Christmas as well. Yeah. All the food and everything. Yeah. The neighbours were very helpful because she she lived in just this little um, crescent, as it were. Yeah. And um, everybody was so helpful with all different bits of their rations and uh, yeah. but m mum organised it dad's mum organised it all but you said she that was, she was a good organiser oh she was brilliant yeah she was brilliant especially as the yes. family would have wanted no things to go on as normal yes. the next day and yes, exactly. all the cooking and everything and they also needed. she she looked after my dad because yeah. my mum yeah of course had died yeah and uh she was so helpful to have him as well, yeah. and he stayed the night as well. And so you said the next day you went, because it was only over the road you yes. went for your honeymoon, because your best man's family had gone away? Yes, the best man. He yeah. was a dear friend of, of ours for many, many years. Yeah. And he had gone away with his mum and dad to his sister's for Christmas Day and Boxing Day. Uh, so they let us let us use the house for our honeymoon yeah. for for Christmas Day and Boxing Day, and that was lovely. But you said you probably popped over the next yes. day to see your dad oh, and yes. and have lunch yes. and yeah. Yes, and Mum made it. Oh, she made it just so. Made the wedding and the days afterwards so lovely yeah. for us. It was it couldn't have been better. No.
at all. It was marvellous. So looking at the photo, Mum, there's Nanny and Grandad there, looking very proud. Your dad looks as proud as punch, yes. Mum. Absolutely yes. proud as punch. You've got Auntie Joyce, Dad's sister, as the bridesmaid. She is 16. Yes. Then you've got your sister's daughter, who is 12. Yes. Um, and you've got Anne, who's Dad's sister. She was five. And she's the one that I'm going to be talking about. Who's just written the book. She's 82 yes. now. So Nanny made the dresses uh, or procured them from some net. We think Nanny made them. Yes. How she did it, we don't know. But Grandad could mostly lay his hands on what he wanted, couldn't he, Mum? Well, he knew so many people yeah. through his work. Faria. Yes. Yes. So that yeah. he probably was able to get the material yeah. and it, it was... That's probably how yeah. that all happened. But could, also for, for Mum Ethel to have done all that yeah. and made the dresses. Absolutely. Just, yes. Beautiful. Yes. And somehow you've got a bunch of flowers in your arms. Uh, you don't know where they came no. from, but you've got them. All the food was done when you don't quite know how. It was all put on for yes. you. And then you've got, in the picture, you've got Freddie Medell. He was your no. best man no. whose house you... His mum and dad's yes. house who you stayed in. Dad's best friend. Just behind you, peeping through, is your brother, who do you remember? We, Well, you'll remember, yes. but we spoke about he'd lost his wife and baby, yes. hadn't he? Yes. And uh, so he was on his own and, you know... Well, he was on leave from the Navy. Right, think. yeah. What a, what a time he'd yes. had. Then you've got Auntie... Rini, who was Dad's brother's wife, with little Carol, yes. little baby, but of course Uncle Eddie was in the navy. Was he, away he, in the he war. Was away. Yeah. Yes. Then you've got your sister, whose daughter who was bridesmaid. She's twelve, but she's got a baby in arms. Who's Pat? Yes. And as you said, she was born in Scotland. Scotland yes. Because she followed your, your mum and you up up into Scotland. Into Scotland. Yes. So everybody there had really got a story to yes. tell hadn't they your dad had recently been widowed yes. and here you are both looking so grown up but only 18 and yes. a half because we'd been at work since we were 14 yeah. so we'd worked for four years yeah. before we were married yeah and also it was during the war so so many things had happened just and... seemed the right thing yes. now you're wearing a borrowed wedding dress mum but what about dad i wonder where he got the suit from oh that was borrowed also that was I believe from his uncle who was in the war then his mother uh, Ethel's brother George oh, George yes righty ho yes so that was borrowed as well okay um, everything's borrowed yes. did you have your own knickers I wonder <laughs> But it all looks a lovely, lovely, yes. you know, oh, yeah, yes. and everybody's got yes. a smile on their face. Yes. But when you think it was December the 24th, 1944, yes. wow, you know. Yes. You didn't know the war was going no. to end. No, exactly. Yeah. You didn't know that it was going to end the following year. The following no. year. It could have gone on for, yes. a, a, you know, however many yes. years. You did, just didn't know what was ahead of you. So we'll leave it there. Thanks yes. for sharing that, Mum. And uh, I'll have put the picture up so that you can be seeing it too. So how different weddings are yes. now, that's what and we were saying. And of course we had a long honeymoon. Oh, long honeymoon. Yes, Christmas Day and Boxing Day. And that was that. That was that. <laughs> yep, yep. And also, though, you did go down to Cornwall in the summer. Yes, in the summer we went to Ethel's sis, Mum's sister. Yeah. Uh, who lived in Cornwall, yeah. and uh, she she called that our late honeymoon. Right, but you had to take Anne with you. Yes, uh, yes, because she hadn't had uh, her holidays were yeah. very great. So you're then. looking after a six year old yes. on your honeymoon, yes. Mum. Yes, but then Aunt Em was was oh, a good she Aunt was Em good. was a good nanny. So Aunt Em was was nanny. Ethel's sister. sister. Yes. Now, who you said you were sitting on the stairs at one time? No, Aunt M was Nanny Ethel's aunt, because she was Aunt M. She was quite elderly. Right. 
Now, you said you were sitting on the stairs and having a little pipe of your eye. You were crying at your wedding, just after it all. Yes. Because you felt for your dad being yes. on his own. But somebody came and said something to you. That was on him. That was on him. So she was up from Cornwall, yes. Mum? Or she probably came up for Christmas. Right. And, that, and she probably, I can't remember her staying okay. with Ethel, but she probably stayed with somebody. Yes. And, of course, when we look on Ancestry, we can see Aunt Em had lost her brother. Yes. She'd lost so many people that she yes. loved recently yes. that um, yes. she was quite... She wasn't hard. She was no, just, no, she just saying, came and that's said, how it is, love. Yes. Yeah. Then, come on, come and join us. Yeah. Because um, this is all... In fact, she, she said, this has all been done for you yeah. and you're just sitting here and you're not yeah. part. So. Well, it was all overwhelming. Oh, yes. Absolutely, with yes. Mum not being there. Yes. So, yes, everybody had a story to tell and everyone was going through yes. it. Yeah. Yes. But there we are. So thanks for sharing yes. that, Mum. So next time, I think we'll skip on and um, we'll do the move to... Um, to Harlow. To Harlow. Oh. Yes, better yes. days ahead. Yes, yeah. lovely. All right then, lovely. we we'll say cheerio. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye. Well, thanks, Mum. Uh, I, I so enjoy, I've learnt so much, I said that last week I think, but it, it's a joy to do it with her and to think of her being there, 18 and a half, and um, with dad and having lost her mum and having borrowed a wedding dress and had a big bunch of flowers. If you knew mum, she's very, everything's delicate and and she's got this huge bunch of flowers uh, and yeah, sitting on the stairs crying. I think she really felt that her, oh, anyway, she said it, didn't she? So thanks. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. So, I just want to tell you now what's on my windowsill in the kitchen uh, before I do a little bit of TA and finish off and then have the film. Because Ali of Little Drops of Wonderful, who I watch, I've watched her right from the beginning. She, um, she did Vlogtober. And for any of you that don't know what that is, the, people do Vlogtober and they just put up a short little uh, video every day and one day she said I don't know what to talk about today I'll show you what's on my kitchen windowsill and she said please show me what's on yours and put the hashtag in so uh, that's what I've done I've made a little film of what's on my kitchen windowsill so I'll show you that here and then I'll come back and uh, we'll have a little bit of transactional analysis because that's what TA stands for and then we'll finish off with a little film so here's what's on my kitchen windowsill. I hope you enjoy through the keyhole. So what's on my windowsill? First of all, a mirror. It was my dad's and I like it just to see what I look like while I'm washing up. Little little clock he gave me, a little present clock. I think it's so pretty. And then a frog, that was my father-in-law's. We found that in his kitchen um, when we cleared out this house. And this was by our place... Uh, settings for my grandson's wedding. Everyone, my granddaughter had different uh, different colours. Uh, this is a Shelley's little set I got in the charity shop. I think it's so pretty. And these flowers are picked from a plant that our friend Heather gave us, which is by our pond. So yeah, this is a little tip. That's the sugar bowl. I've just got the sugar bowl, um, two saucers and a cup. Got it from a charity shop. I think it's an it's a very pretty make. Uh, this is Michelle Rue. Oh, not on there yet. Yeah, just got a little plate and a sugar bowl there. This is from uh, Michelle Rue. We went to the Waterside Inn as one of our anniversary presents. The family uh, clubbed together and sent us there, which was a wonderful night. And we got given that as we were leaving, amongst other things. And this is a lovely egg cup that I love. I love it because of the, the colours. Enid Blight 1950s colours. I just love it. Um, and so, yeah, that's very special to me. Just bought locally. But it uh, makes me feel happy when I see it in the mornings. Another little chick in there. Reminds me of my girls up the end. And this is the little plate. Lovely cottage garden. And, and again, lovely colours. And I love the shape of it. 
It just sits nicely on my windowsill. And an aloe vera plant that my neighbour gave me, and I spotted there, that's what um, Pete uses when he tests the chicken, you know, the thermometer. So there we are, that's what's on my windowsill. What's on yours? If you fancy doing a little letting the, uh, Ali know, uh, yes, you put the little hashtag down below. Um, another person I watch is Mousy Makes, Helen. Hello, Helen. Uh, she, I know she's uh, watching now, and uh, she put up what was on her windowsill this week too. So, yeah. So let's go on to some transactional analysis, shall we? What is transactional analysis? Well, it's a way of finding out about yourself and finding out how sometimes when we have a transaction, when we, um, yeah, what's the word, interact with people, how we can change that so that our reactions are different and so the outcome is different. But I had to teach you first of all, parent, adult, child. And what I wanted you to do, if you want to join in, if you want to do this, um, is to find out whether you're mostly in child or mostly in adult or mostly in parent or how you fluctuate and we all need to fluctuate and we can help ourselves through going into those three ego states so I was talking to someone this week and uh, oh, she felt very worried about something, very worried. And I said, how does child feel? Your child ego state. Oh, she said, I want someone with me. I want someone with me. I feel worried. I said, okay. Again, listen. Don't say that silly. Listen. Okay. What would controlling parents say? You must be able to do this on your own. That's silly. What would nurturing parents say? Oh, is there anyone that could help you? Can I help you? How can I help? What would adults say? Adult would say, well, what are the choices? Um, what are the choices here? And so this person looked at her choices, decided on the choice she wanted to make, child felt okay because nurturing parent was saying that's okay you know you could get in touch with this person or you could get in touch with that person that might help an adult said well do what you feel is right you make the choice let's look at the choices the here and now but first of all to get to that conclusion she had to listen to child and that's what we that's the best way of finding out how we're feeling because child often lets us know as to our you know literal children you'll always know how your child's feeling or oh, they'll stamp their feet they'll shout and they'll scream listen what are they telling you what's going on yeah and so that's what we can do for ourselves so those ego st states are very very helpful So TA, it's this theory of personality and uh, it's a theory that helps us grow as individuals and change as individuals. Do you remember those, uh, yeah, the, the synapses? We can make new ones and we can change, but first of all, we've got to learn. So I'm hoping you understand the parent, adult, child now. So imagine you're sitting reading a book and I come into the room and I say, hi there. And you say, hi. We've just completed a transaction. In TA, transactional analysis, that is a transaction. Hi. Hi. And that's what we all felt we were, oh, we felt bereft, a little bit bereft in lockdown, didn't we? When we couldn't transact so much because we were in lockdown. We could only, and if we lived on our own, our transactions, we need these transactions to, to keep alive, to know that we're alive, to, uh, yeah, to function. So it's a kind of communication. And what we do is we analyse these communications and we see where we can change and how we can change. And we use the ego states to help us to do that.
So just supposing I'm going to just leave it here and I'm just going to say, what's the time? And you say one o'clock. Well, one o'clock. Adult to adult. Now, I suppose I ask you an adult, what's the time? And you reply in controlling parent, one o'clock. You're late again. Ah, that's completely different now. We put ourselves in a completely different stance. We've got a response back to our transaction that was different to what we thought. <coughs> now, when we get the response we think we're going to get, we know where we are. Adult to adult. I call it the train track. We can carry on there, even if it's parent to parent. We can carry on there, even if it's child to child. We know where we are. But when someone switches, that can throw us like that. Have you ever felt that jolt in the middle of a conversation and something's changed? And that's what we're going to look at during our next part of transactional analysis. Yeah. Because just to show you, that person who comes back in parent, they don't want you to stay an adult. What's the time? What's the time? You're late again. They want you to go into child. They're pushing you into child. And we're going to talk a lot more about this. And so then they're, they're hoping you're going to come back with, oh, sorry. Hmm. Whereas you were an adult, they've come back in parent. And they want to push you in child. Do you remember? Or can you see it? It's faded. Parent, adult, child. What's the time? One o'clock. What's the time? Aimed there, but they come back in parent. Time? You're late again. Wants to push you into child where you say, oh, sorry. Now, when you become aware of all of this, you can change. You don't have to react from child. You can choose where to react from. And that gives you, yeah, it's a whole different being. It's a whole different way of communicating. And we learn about ourselves and we have the capacity to change. I'm going to leave it there. But transactional analysis, it's all about how we transact those transactions, we call them transactions, how we can learn about why we come from child. Why would, you know, Pete wouldn't go into child like I, he'd go into rebellious child. If someone said, one o'clock, you're late again, he'd say, no, I'm not. <laughs> it's his divorce system, isn't it? Well, not much. I'd go, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, adapted child. He comes back from rebellious child. But of course, I've learned to come back from adult now and adult would be completely different and then the conversation would carry on in a completely different way. So just, just the flavour of what transactional analysis and how we're just at the beginning, just past the front cover really. So what's coming up now is the little film, my little walk to, to uh, Margate. So I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you next week. And so have a good week. Now take it easy. It's been lovely and sunny here. It's a beautiful day and I'm off for a hearing test this morning just to see how my hearing is. So I'll let you know how that goes. So I'll see you next week. So take care all of you and thank you for sharing your time with me. Bye.
Gotcha. in that pool.